Fort Hayes State University is gearing up for another fall commencement. Chief Communication Officer Scott Kaysen stops by to share all the details on this episode of The Post Podcast. Friday, December 16th, and Saturday, December 17th. Um, yeah, it's something that, boy, we really look forward to all the time. It's And for the students and their families, it's the culmination of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, the joy you see on the faces of those folks as they walk across the stage and shake President Mason's hand, and then they embrace their families. It's There's nothing quite like it. It really reinforces the good work we do at Fort Hayes State University. Absolutely. You know, I was in the band, so I always, that was one of my, uh, this was kind of like the cap off of the year for every year. Uh, was going and playing in that event. I don't even know if they still do it the same way they did, but back then you had to set through the entire ceremony yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> to play the exit song. I'm glad you said that because one of the things we learned from, really from the COVID experience, was you know we, we had to break our, our one major ceremony into several smaller ones just to make it, you know, we thought, safer and things like that. So but it was a model that really worked for us, and so we're, we're going to do it again. This you know Last year was our first fall commencement, December commencement. Uh, we're doing it again. It was so successful last year. So we break into several ceremonies that are smaller, more intimate. They're quicker. It's not quite the huge event that it once was that it took for a long time. And, you know, if you've been through some spring commencement, you know that Gross Memorial Coliseum gets really hot mm-hmm. as well. And this enables us to pretty much get folks in and out of a ceremony within an hour. Um, so we, it's been really well received. We're going to keep, keep with that model again here in the, in the, in the fall and then again in the spring. Yeah. Now this year, how many do you expect to to walk the stage this time? Eleven hundred students. We expect wow. to participate in commencement. In the in you know this is not the May the traditional commencement. This is this is for um this is for our our fall December graduation. Eleven hundred students. And it used to be just before we talk some more details on this one. It used to be that they would all every everybody would come back right for the for the May one, which was contributing to that length and the time. Yeah, yeah, and but we still struggled, I think, to you know, to get some uh, online students because we serve you know six thousand online students all over the world, and um, so you know adding virtual ceremonies as we've done recently uh, helps for those folks who can't make it. But there's always a great story about somebody you know often it's somebody who's a member of the uh, military service who finds a way to get back, you know, and, and participate in the ceremonies. But, uh, yes, yeah, so we try to offer as many options as we can, again, in person and virtual for graduates and graduate students and undergraduate students to give everybody we can as much of a, of a commencement celebration as we can. Yeah. And you, you, you have quite a few people that, uh, that watch the ceremonies online, right? I think so. Yeah. We, we broadcast through tiger media net. So if you, if you find Tiger Media Net on YouTube, you'll be able to tune in and watch the ceremonies. Um, and uh, we'll record those, and folks can watch them after the fact as well. Very good. Yeah, and I think for those folks that walk the stage, going back and watching it later, <laughs> they're like, you know, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know what the right word would be, but people are interested. They want to see see what see themselves oh, yeah. in that in that moment. Yeah, absolutely. And again, with the, with the, the way we've... Um, sort of broken up our ceremonies it's a lot easier to watch too you don't you can get through you, you can go right to your ceremony and watch it right right there get get in and out it's, uh really lends itself to folks that don't have all the time in the world to to sit on on their youtube channel mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's talk some details this is coming up uh the first one is uh this f- coming friday so a week from today right yeah, about december, this time I, december 16th 9 a.m will be the first ceremony um the doors open at eight o'clock for, for graduates and families uh, but 9 a.m will be uh, graduates from the um, undergraduate masters and eds candidates from the robbins college of business and entrepreneurship college of health and behavioral sciences and the worth college of science technology and mathematics and then at 11 a.m we'll have the college of arts humanities and social sciences and the college of education for their for their graduates and then that's on friday the, the 16th on the saturday the 17th at 9 a.m is the virtual ceremony for graduate students followed by an 11 a.m. virtual ceremony for undergraduates. And those, those, again, will be online at Tiger Media Net's YouTube page. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, So for those uh, that are actually going to be able to make it here and uh, check that out in person, what's the... What's that look like nowadays? Because I know like back in the day, yeah, you'd want to be there hours in advance if you had any hope of parking within a couple miles of Gross Memorial. But uh, it's probably a little bit easier now, right? It is a little bit easier. Um, it, it will still be a bit of a challenge, but um, we found uh, we've, we're able to accommodate um, the folks born to park and not have to walk, hike too far. We'll have shuttle buses available as well. Uh, faculty and staff are encouraged to park on campus and make the trip, you know, 
across the, the big creek over to Gross Memorial from, from campus parking. Um, the biggest challenge I think we have is that, that transition space between the ceremonies, having folks uh, get out of the parking lot, open up the spaces for the next group coming in. So we really encourage folks to, um, uh, you know, don't linger too long before, if you have the morning ceremony to, to, to make sure the next folks have a place to park as they come in. So, um, and uh, so we're, we're encouraging guests who are arriving for the second ceremony, get there no more than 15, 30 minutes before 10 a.m. So hmm. um, that'll get the people coming out of the, the 9 o'clock ceremony a chance to clear out a little bit. Yeah, and there is there is a little bit in, in all of the development that's been on campus, if you haven't been out there in the last few years, there is parking a little bit closer now kind of towards the, oh gosh, I'm directionally challenged here, but I say what, the north side of Malloy kind of up towards uh, Hammond Hall, what, which is one of the newer buildings. There's parking and then there's parking what used to be the practice field a long time ago behind the president's house. So you could get into those lots and, and probably yeah. make that walk. It, if you don't have any mobility issues, probably make that pretty comfortably. Yeah, that, right. That's, that's a, that's a pretty easy walk from those two places. Absolutely. And then, so where will those shuttles be picking people up at? Um, usually they pick them up right there on campus, right by those spots. Right oh, okay. Around Malloy and then that big lot there behind um, president's house and, and, and the, and the nursing building there, Stroop Hall. Stroop Hall. That's what I yeah. couldn't think of it. <laughs> it was one of the few buildings I did never take classes in because obviously I'm not a nursing student <laughs> or wasn't a nursing student. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so what else to, should people know about these events as they're coming up? Um, well, we, we, you know, again, we're trying to create as many ways as possible to, to join in the celebration. So again, we're encouraging folks to attend. The public's invited to all of our commencement ceremonies. Uh, just want to share in the joy. We've got a lot of multimedia with Tiger Media Net partnerships with it as well, live and then recorded. Um, but we also have something set up. It's called a Kudo board, and it's become real popular. It's a it's a web based bulletin board where folks can pu- post notes of congratulations to the graduates, and we're already seeing folks posting to their family members and things like that. It's it's a service you can get to from the fhsu.edu slash commencement webpage. Uh, I think the, the link is celebrating our graduates. There's a whole bunch of options that fo- folks can take advantage of on that website to join in the celebration. Uh, but the Cuda board is a fun one, and the folks are really starting to take advantage of that too, especially for folks that can't make it, you know, that, that are at a distance or whatnot. And, um, you know, we'll have people with their caps on gowns standing in their, in their, on the back porch, you know, and because they, they graduated, they participated in their virtual ceremony, but the rest of the world gets to see that they're 48 state graduates. That's very cool. Yeah, I think about all those uh, back when I was in school, before all those tools were available. Uh, yeah, it was either be there or miss it. <laughs> there <laughs> yeah. wasn't all those other cool options. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So if you're, if, uh, you're listening out there, want to know more details, that commencement page on the Fort Hayes main page? Yeah, you just fhsu.edu slash commencement. And that's your one-stop shop for all things commencement related. Perfect. Well, sir, anything else before we go? No, just looking forward to it. Tis the season for a lot of joy. And uh, from Fort Hayes State University, on behalf of President Mason, who I'm representing today, I just want to wish everybody out there happy holidays and a joyous new year. And uh, we're really thankful to, to be part of this community. 